Welcome back. In this video, we're going to show you how to install iBooks Author. If you remember in previous videos, we actually mentioned that you need to be running Apple's um, OS X 7.2, which is Lion um, second update, to actually run iBooks Author. So how do we know if we actually have that version? And the easy way to find out is just click on the Apple logo in the top left of your Mac and go to About This Mac. And it'll tell you the Mac, uh, Mac OS X version number 10.7.3. So I'm okay to run this, so I'm going to actually open App Store, and we do that by launching the icon here down the bottom, this blue icon with the A in it, and that will get us to App Store. Now, what App Store is is an application provided by Apple for you to be able to find and buy and install applications. Now, there's tons of free applications on there, as well as applications ranging anywhere from $0.99 cents to multiple hundreds of dollars. So we're going to go in here real quick, and we're just going to type in iBooks Author in the little spotlight search field here. And that's going to pull up iBooks Author. And you can see here, it tells me right away that I already have this installed. And there seems to be some new templates out there for iBooks. And here's the price of those. If I want to buy those, I would just click it. And you see it comes up and says Buy App. And that's exactly what you would do for your iBooks Author, except that it doesn't cost you anything. Once it's installed, it'll tell you that it's installed here so you don't have to worry about actually installing it a second time or accidentally trying to install it a second time. You can also get more details about the app just by clicking on its title, and that'll bring you up you know, some general information, some screenshots, who authored it, when it was last updated, and all that kind of stuff. Additionally, whenever there's an update for the application, it'll actually show up in this little Updates tab here. And to keep you from having to remember to actually go in there and, and look at this thing from time to time, it'll give you a little badge here in the right-hand corner of this App Store icon um, to let you know that there's an update. So once it's done installing, your launch pad will actually pop up. That's this guy right here to let you know that it's installed. And you can find the application right from Launchpad by clicking on here. Another way to find the application is actually by going to Finder, then going to your Applications, and then you'll see iBooks Authors there as well. But my favorite way to find applications is actually using Spotlight. And you can do that by either clicking the little eyeglass here or the little magnifying glass here or doing Command Spacebar. And just type the first couple of letters. And you see I just typed two letters and before I even got to the third. Bang, there it is, iBooks Author. So it's a real fast way to find not just iBooks Author but any application. So we're going to click on iBooks Author here. And the first time it's gonna, it comes up, it's going to bounce in the dock a couple of times. Um, just because it's setting up some cache and, and setting up your personal templates library and some other under the hood stuff. Um, and then it'll, it'll sit here. Now, just because you see it down in the dock while it's running does not mean it's actually in your dock. If you want it to stay in your dock while you're work, working on your book, you can actually just take it and drag, oops, take it and drag it over to a new position. Now, that, now it's locked in my dock. So if I go to iBooks Author and hit quit, you'll see now it's, right here on my dock and I can just simply just launch it whenever I want to. Moving it over that one position tells the dock that, hey, I want to keep this thing in my dock. And then whenever we launch iBooks Author, it's going to come up with the six default templates plus any templates that you've installed yourself. Now, if you've installed some third-party templates from some of the applications I have pointed out earlier, um, th they may or may not show up in here depending on whether you followed their install procedures for installing their templates. So just to be just in case you were curious, why aren't they here? Um, down the bottom here, you have the ability to resize these guys. So if they're too big or if you've got a whole bunch of them, obviously you can cancel or choose. If you're already working on a book, you can go open recent. Or if you have one from somewhere else, you can go open existing file and just go find the file. Now, I s highly suggest that you use a service like Dropbox or another file synchronization service like Google um, Files to store your book in. And the reason for that is a lot of times I'll find myself working on my book at home and then I'll go on the road for a couple of days and I want to do some more work while I'm in the hotel and, oh, do I have the latest copy of my laptop? Now how do I get back to my desktop machine and going through all that jazz? Well, if you keep it in something like Google Files or Dropbox or one of, one of the many other synchronization services out there, most of which have some, some free services that you can use, um, I save all my books in there so this way they're automatically synced between my devices so I can always have the latest copy and, and various revisions of my books and my media um, without having to you know 
think about it and copy things back and forth and which one's newer and which one's older and all that jazz. It's just much easier. Just save it there. I know I've always got the latest copy and any backup copies that I might need. And some of the services actually maintain a backup for you as well, which is kind of cool.